apparently uh now from ace as in asexual to the ace family okay are you guys ready busting it out we've been waiting for this all day it's fucking time boys Uh, there are a lot of responses on Twitter to what other families I should be reaching, uh, looking into. I've heard a lot about these guys. The Ace family. We are going to fucking do it. Now, of course, Ace is asexuality. The Ace family, on the other hand, uh, from what I understand, are uh, clout goblins. I don't know anything about them. This is literally just like a, a fucking... I'm diving into this like head first. Especially because we saw that Jobbery video on that other family. And I've come to find that there are a lot of like... There are a lot, a lot, a lot of fucking uh, family content out there on YouTube. So let's take a look. Let's get started on this. Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Right Opinion, the home of a twat with too much free time. And families. My god, do I love families. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Humor aside, the family is an important staple in the many societies that we do indeed live in. As a concept, it has been around for longer than I can remember, and although many of us do have various goals, there are many people who would just like to settle down with a partner who loves Thank them you, and Bernie's raise a few kids. Jeans. It's a completely fair perspective, and one that I hope people have the opportunity to fulfill. It's definitely something that I I would like to do at one point in my life though I'm not entirely sure when. However, I think many of us have a very idealized version of how these things would play out, and although it often takes a few attempts to get it right, and a few more for some, and a few more for others, and maybe a few more on top of that, it's still something we like to hold on to, which is where the idea of family vlogging comes into play. Vlogs appeal to the audience under the notion that they can represent a life that we may idolize and feel an affinity with. That's what has made so many of these wealthy vloggers famous from the start. However, it's important that these people can place themselves in the vlogger's position and that the life they envision can be channeled through a relatable individual. There was a time when a majority of audiences on YouTube liked to envision their lives as the sweet, wholesome ones that will one day be blessed with the same glorious tidings that so many of those lovely vloggers have earned themselves. However, at some point in the last few years, I've noticed a shift. I noticed it in my Emma Chamberlain video that, hey, I guess people are feeling kind of cynical now. And I mean, who can blame them? The world is a depressing place, and I guess everyone is just kind of in that mood. And out of that rose a new lineup of stars who were slightly more controversial than the previous ones. There are positives and negatives. There's a newer video. Should I watch this one or should I watch the content court Oops. H3 one? All rise for the Honorable Judge Ethan Klein. This episode is brought to you by Ridge and Quip. This one's newer and apparently the other one's like... What the fuck, dude? Content court's better. We could do the content court one. Anonymous user with another hundred, dude. Holy shit. Crazy. I got, we got an oil baron in the chat. Asexualizes his kids is so terrible. Wait, really? Oh, no. Um, apparently, apparently a lot of stuff happened between this video and now. And then a lot of stuff happened between this video and now even. So I, maybe it's better to watch the fucking content court is not better. H3 content court is hella poggers. Is it Miski paying for stolen content? Maybe. Tips to this, but at least it gives us something to talk about. Now, this didn't have to be particularly negative in a way. It just meant slightly more loud, obnoxious, and less subtle. We're gonna make our worst nightmare come true. This was a case in every genre, and eventually the penny dropped in the family genre too. You know, you don't have to pretend that everything's perfect. How about conflict and storm? People love melodrama. You just need energy, some ideas, a bit of money, and of course, a partner and a kid. I mean, hey, they can't be too hard to find, especially if you're as dashing as the man known as Austin McBroom. Um, I enjoy catching the ball. I enjoy just having a blast with the teammates on the, on the field and off the field. Oh, yeah. 
Austin McBroom is the husband and father of the Ace family. Now, he is an individual who is obviously known primarily on YouTube. However, at one point, it seemed his career was not destined there. As that clip showed, he was a very sporting-oriented individual and was highly rated in the basketball scene. And to be fair, the dude had some moves. He could shoot some hoops. Given his prominence, you could say he was kind of low-key media figure. He had a previously established audience due to his skills and here's an old screenshot of his 2015 Twitter long before the launch of his YouTube channel, which had his three principles listed in his biography. One God, Thanks, Mom. two family, three hoop. A simple set of beliefs that had guided him to relative success in the basketball scene and a tendency to write inspirational tweets. One of the elements that was very noticeable on his Twitter prior to the creation of his channel was the love of his fiance, Catherine. They had a fairly standard story behind them. They saw each other a couple times and then decided that actually they had feelings which led them to initiating this relationship and the subsequent birthing of their daughter, Elle. The run-up to their child had a fair bit of coverage on Twitter and a nice bit of hype surrounding it. So I guess at that point, they decided that their life was interesting enough to start a YouTube channel. Hey guys, welcome to our YouTube channel. This is our first Q&A. You guys sent us a bunch of questions that we picked out. Now, when I looked at their old content and I saw that their first video was a Q&A, I thought they were pulling my leg. That's some ballsy confidence in your character to open your channel with a Q&A video. Now, from looking at an old Social Blade screenshot, it's possible that they had some other videos up but deleted them before launch. So I guess they just used the already existing clout that they had surrounding Austin's basketball career and his relationship to launch the channel. They originally were called the incredible name of Austin and Catherine Vlogs before changing it to the Ace Family, Ace representing the initials of each family member's name, Austin, Catherine, and L. They do have another child now, Alea, but I guess Acia family didn't quite have the same ring to it. They started off on a fair wave of momentum and have since built on that, accumulating over 17 million subscribers in the space of three and a half years. So what's the big deal? Family vlogs are here to stay. Well, although vloggers have always taken on their fair share of drama, there seems to be something more about the Ace family, and even more specifically, the man of the house, Austin McBroom, in that he may not be practicing what he preaches and treating those around him with the respect that may be expected. After all, this family is a family who's very grateful. Living life to the fullest, like we're keeping God first, being good people, and just trying our best to inspire others, yeah. literally. We're doing our best as far as using our platform in order to do greater. So there's zero percent chance these people are like actually religious, right? Or are they? Or are they just like fucking? They they got to be doing it for the God clout. That's so marketable, dude. That's so insanely marketable to just like have like a racially ambiguous couple be like super into fucking god they're also photogenic oh my god young how big are they on youtube i have no idea My brother-in-law was shouted out in one of their videos and got 20k followers on YouTube because of it. Shut the fuck up. Are you serious? Like you doing the opposite? Had the bait? Yeah. 17 million? 20 million? Things and inspire people. And that's really All hard. right. I got to rebrand, boys. Sorry. Like, we just get so excited to do things for people. And if you can't already tell, like that's just in our nature and that's what we love to do. A family grateful for many things, but sometimes more than words is necessary to convince people that you believe it. And that is what has been in question over the last couple years, ultimately climaxing in a situation very recently involving much more serious claims. Although I have a lot to say about the validity of those. This is not going to be just about Austin. In fact, Catherine is probably going to be receiving a fair bit of scrutiny as well. So don't worry, everyone's going to receive their fair share of discourse. Let's have a discussion to see if the Ace family are really as ace as they proclaim to be, or if behind the candelabra, they're not quite the role models that many see them as. Well, fellas, I'm ready to get up and do my thing. I want to get into it, man, you know? And yes, that was a James Brown reference because, well, I'm a sex machine. Let's go.
I wanted to start off this part with a quick disclaimer. If there's one red flag that will immediately make me question a creator's desire to produce realistic organic content, it's the notion of pranks. Now, of course, not just any pranks. I'm sure there are some great pranks out there. But you know, that brand of prank that I'm talking about, Roman Atwood, Fousey Tube, Joey Salads, Prank Invasion, all that jazz. The reason that I make this statement is because for many of you YouTube veterans, you will know that these pranks were all blatantly fake. The reason for making these pranks no! fake- No! He's lying, right? No shot. This can't be the case. I don't believe it. These are real. They're real to was me. was because there was never a standard presented by an audience that we'd expect them to make the content genuine. People valued the stunt over the sentiment behind it. On top of this, the fakeness ensured the safety of the individual involved, particularly when they partook in inflammatory stunts, which may cause emotional harm to another individual. Now, honestly, the Ace family were probably far from the worst in this area, and the topics that they faked probably didn't have many social repercussions. But when I found out that a lot of their most viewed videos were pranks, and seeing it as how they kicked off their channel, I started to become a bit concerned. I don't have much confidence in these channels because honestly, I believe that any channel prepared to sell an audience pranks won't shy away from selling the audience anything else. However, it is a case of positive proof and I am a judgmental person in this instance. But my first impressions of the family were not optimistic to say the least. One of my concerns with channels that fake these things is that they don't really have much concern for their actual relationship. This video has already been debunked. Please listen to both sides before you come to a judgment about this beautiful family. What? Damn, bro. I literally... I have simps for the Ace family. I guess when they have fucking 20 million followers, there's going to be fucking simps for... Uh, even in this community, you know what I mean? Kind of cool, I guess. Interesting to see this beautiful family. I think they'll be all right, bro. They got like fucking 20 million subs. Relationship with their audience and only care about how the audience sees them, which allows them to partake in exploitive behaviors that the audience overlooks. This is one of the running criticisms when I was accumulating a list of topics that were on the chopping board today, that they pretend to care and actually just exploit the relationship whenever they can, which is a pretty cynical perspective. But once again, to fulfill such a claim, we need proof. Let's talk about the incidents that have drawn this criticism, starting with their charity work. To many audiences, charity work seems like an unmitigated positive. Those who engage in charitable behavior are often praised, and rightly so. However, for the very cynical people, they may see charity as a phony way for a creator to try and gain reputation points, which may lead to more negative exploitation in the future. Now, generally, I don't like to side with the latter perspective, because these sorts of things, even if they're stunts, can bring a lot of positive attention to good causes. But I also have to note as a premise that doing charity work does not make you an inherently good or trustworthy person, which which is where we look at the Ace Family's charity work. And lastly, to spice it up a little bit, the person I pick for the one-on-one -on -one competition after he's done taking an L, we're gonna play five on five. He will pick his four other guys and I will pick my four other guys. And the winner of that game will receive a $100,000 check to donate to charity. Each player on that team will get a portion of the money to donate to their charity of choice. And guys, that's the best part about this event, is to be able to give back. To us, there's nothing better in the world than to give back. The Ace family love to give back. And so when they announced that they were hosting a charity basketball event in June 2018, obviously in the spirit of Austin's game of choice, people were excited. As heard, the winner of the game would receive $100,000 to donate to charity, a very noble cause indeed. The event came around. It was a huge success. It seemed that people had a great time and they even donated that 75,000. All righty then. This caught fairly immediate criticism as it was not the amount they had originally pledged to donate. Many theorized that given the sales, they should have made. A Wait, what? What a weird way to fucking. What a strange thing to scam, dude. Like, why would you do that? I don't understand why you would just like, 
shave a little bit off the top dude what the fuck over five hundred thousand dollars from the event but others argue that given the costs it is possible that seventy five thousand was actually a reasonable amount to donate and besides seventy five thousand was better than nothing any sort of discussion around how much they made is very gray and so it's hard to tally up cost profit margins however if i was in their shoes given the money involved if the donation fell short i probably would have just filled in the remaining money myself or at least trying to explain to my audience the situation the closest they get to doing that is this clip from what i understand they that's so strange how much money do they fucking raise for a massive charity event like that that's wild took 11 dollars from each ticket for ambulance just to be there on spot but even then the explanation is rather insufficient as pointed out by epic youtuber pyro cynical so let's take 11 dollars off each ticket but that's still a fraction of the possible profit he made compared to the money he gave away also he might have even hired the stadium for a discounted price or even for free because this was a charity event but i like money and regardless you want to honor your commitment to charity they were selling merch at like 65 dollars a piece at the event and okay to be fair I apologize to the Ace family. Originally, I said, like, they're probably fake Christian and, like, fake into God. I'm immediately sussed out. But now that I uh, notice that they are uh, allegedly engaging in charity fraud, there is absolutely zero things that you can do that's more Christian than some good old-fashioned charity fraud, okay? That is the most, like, <clears throat> church-like thing you could fucking do. And I feel they could have afforded it. I'm sure the money went to the right cause. I just sincerely hope they did donate every last cent because the next few events may make you doubt that they did. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, well, shame on me, but still significant amount of shame on you too. And once again, the source of the controversy came from a basketball event involving $100,000. I mean, it's like they're baiting their audience at this point. So in this video, Oster announces he's doing another giveaway, this time actually $100,000, and he'll be giving it to anyone who can shoot 10 consecutive hoops in a basketball competition. It sounds pretty easy to me. If you think you can do it, hit us up. If you think your favorite YouTuber or celebrity can do it, make sure you tag them. I also put the video on my Instagram, so make sure you tag them in the comments. Guys, it's a free 100K. You don't have to pay to enter, although we suggest, it's up to you, but we suggest whoever wins donates a portion to charity. You all know, Kath and I love giving back. Now, given the rather general language, him talking about YouTube's, but- Hold up. What happened? We're doing a portion now? I wonder if there's a reason why they did that. But also talking about anyone who thinks they're good enough in both his video and his announcement tweet you'd expect this competition to be open to anyone right wrong austin just listed 20 already fairly wealthy individuals who definitely weren't just randomly selected it kind of sucked and to add insult to injury during the competition he invites one of his other basketball playing friends down who wasn't even on the original list to play and that guy wins it 100k which once again doesn't mean much to anyone People were fairly annoyed because they did feel misled. Not because he actively stated that he was going to be inviting his fans, but because he has shown in the past that he is completely capable of clarifying when he only wants influencers, such as the last basketball game. What that means is I am going to challenge anyone with a support system, whether that be a YouTuber, whether that be a celebrity, whether that be an artist, whether that be a baby. So basically you want to play against someone who has a fan base. That yes. can bring a fan base. Yes. Someone that has support. Yes. When he said the competition was open to people, people have- I mean, he's admitting it. Like, he doesn't give a fuck. Had the impression that he would be inviting anyone, thus imposing these false expectations. The only comment that could remotely be interpreted in the direction- I love that this dude is like, I'll dunk on a baby for if the baby's got enough clout. Like, I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? He's like, yeah, I don't care. Does the baby have clout? Fuck it. Bring the baby over, dude. I will body that baby, okay? I'll post up on that little, little fucking shit. ...of saying it's more influence-focused is this one. So this is a new year. Everyone wants the new year to be better than the last year. So our first video in the new year was a video dedicated to all of our Ace family members. So now we want to do something fun and entertaining for the social media world. After watching this around five times, I came to the conclusion that he was implying this would be focused away from the fans. But it was a vaguely delivered statement, and in the context of the whole video, you'd completely receive a different impression. Again, it's not a huge deal. It's just strange why he didn't seek to make it clearer. 
maybe because he thought it wouldn't be high enough stakes if everyone already knew that a rich person was winning 100,000. Maybe he's just bad at explaining things without Catherine there. Nonetheless, it's not a huge deal. He can quickly clear it up, right? No. I didn't expect to find any of Austin. Austin of the Ace family just fucking dunking on Ryan's toy reviews like, get fucked, kid. This one's on God, bitch. Fucking Fortnite dancing on the kid. Like, most successful YouTuber, what? What now? Boston's response, but I did. And now I understand why he doesn't normally respond. Because, wow, that's a bad response. It's hard to work out exactly what he's saying here, all the logic, but he basically seems insulted that people have a problem when he's done so much. And that if you're a true Ace family member, you must appreciate everything else the mighty Austin McBroom does. And take note- By the way, to be fair, the, the charity scam from the previous one is significantly worse than this. Like, this doesn't- this seems like padding. Maybe that's just my take, but like in the previous video or in the previous like iteration, like they're, them doing 75 grand instead of 100 grand is really fucked up. Me running uh, an ad at the top of the hour is not really fucked up, but similar to that, especially if I don't tell you that you can avoid those ads by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. You get one free Twitch Prime that you can use here. Um. <clears throat> That's another way that you can, uh, you know, avoid the ads, uh, ad block, which prime is free. You can do a $5 ad, uh, or subscription or use an ad block or VPN, but here's the ad break now. It's like the same with Twitch streamers community streamer. Thanks you support for your community with subs Streamer pocket plus $100. Um, our money it seems you have not been in this community for a very long time because i will never thank you for subscribing when like it is a very rare treat for everyone and surprising when i do end up thanking for the subscription so if you are unironically giving money to me uh. or or subscribing so you can hear me read out your username and say thank you for your sub and you're at the wrong place let's keep going no issue with his decisions his other response was at the end of the charity video to the criticism that everyone was rich so they didn't need money damn it feels so good to like because a lot of people kept saying yo give it to someone who needs it like they kept saying everyone in the event you know, makes a lot of money so they don't need it. Guys, you don't know what people's situations are, so you don't know how much someone makes at all, right? But for someone who actually really needed it, I picked someone out of the stands that wasn't even in the contest just because we really wanted to give it away and I felt like he had a good shot. Next thing you know, he wins the game. <laughs> That's dope. That's such a cool story. Fair enough, I guess. Well, once again, the problem arose with the fact that this comment seemed purposely dishonest, as the winner, Austin Mills, is the son of Jade Mills, a luxury real estate agent who has over five billion in sales. Now, I cannot comment on a son's relationship with his ostensibly rich mother, but it definitely made McBroom's comments look a bit ridiculous. Are you fucking kidding me, dude? Are you fucking joking? Is this is this a meme? What? Okay, I spoke way too soon when I said, like, this shit ain't that fucked up. Never mind, that shit is hella fucked up, dude. It's the Ace Family's channel, but the behavior surrounding the stunt seemed insulting to the audience's intelligence, arrogant, and all around a hey! bit mean spirited. And for someone who's so high. Look at that, dude. Look at that, dude. The man, the myth, the legend, dude. Rice gum. When I think about like a like a good charity, I think about rice gum and fucking uh, what's his face, uh, Fraser K. That's how you know this charity is fucking intact. Okay, absolutely working, absolutely working round the clock. Funniest part is he's actually pretty good at basketball.
humble and intent on giving back, you'd think he wouldn't react as if he was a god who felt people weren't praying enough to him. Why would it be so hard to apologize for a misunderstanding that seemed honestly purposely vague? I don't know. Let's talk about it more. Bro, stop this analysis. You could get invited to these b-ball games? No, because my audience would fucking literally shove a rake up my asshole and pull it out of my goddamn heart if I ever went 10 foot near a problematic YouTuber with a problematic past who's throwing a fucking basketball game together. Even if it's like a sick opportunity for me to meet someone else that I've never met before. There would be motherfuckers in here like writing dissertations about how insane it is that I like played basketball with a fucking ace family or some shit. You would literally just be like, you live with losing your shit. And then next week, when fucking Miskiff hangs out with the, uh, the, the, the family, you'd be like, oh my god, that content was so good. Because you hold me to an insane fucking standard. Anyway, that's... You would literally turn around and be like, dude, did you see Ludwig play basketball with the fucking, uh, with the Ace family? That was so sick. Why don't you ever do fun stuff like that? One of the things that I've noticed is that when being faced down with serious criticism, the Ace family doesn't really like talking about it, and when they do, it's typically not with the most finesse. They have two options. They can respond, which we partly observed already, or they can ignore and elicit sympathy through what may appear to be unrelated methods, but honestly, I'm not sure if they're as coincidental as one might assume. Let's begin with the former, how they act when they respond. I've already criticized them for their response to people's annoyance about the basketball game, which although not the biggest deal, did demonstrate a lack of competence. But there is another great situation which once again illuminates this. And probably a few more points as well. We've been getting a lot of comments lately uh, asking us what happened. What happened with the Ace family in this truck. So we just wanted to address it and let you guys hear firsthand from our mouths. Bro, every fucking YouTube parent has just the most insane drip. It's like, it's like, I'm a dad. I'm a YouTube dad. Also, look at my fucking Fendi bag. You know what I mean? Strapped across my chest. What really happened? This is one involving an individual by the name of Urban Trademark 7. He's a designer. He makes some pretty slick designs, and he felt that McBroom had ripped him off. I guess, you know, he came across the, the merchandise again, and he bought a couple items, and he had asked Bobby, like, yeah. It's Goyard? Shut up, bitch. I don't know, okay? I don't know. I don't know the difference between fucking Goyard and Fendi. I just wanted to say a fucking brand, all right? Sorry, I don't know the fucking patterns of Goyard. Do you know the dude that makes these? And, um... Thanks, Bluebird3415 for the 10 gifted subs. Bobby, I guess, told him, like, yeah, you know, I know him, but uh, all his information is on the label. So if you want to reach out to him, you know, that's his Instagram and all his contacts is on there, so... He reached out from the text messages that I post, and I was like, for sure, let's um, link up and try to put something together then. To explain in a bit more depth, it appears that Austin had seen him purchase some of Urban's designs while out and about in local stores and had asked after him. Apparently, he really liked the designs and had fans who he felt would appreciate some merchandise made in the style of that content. So then from there, I was like, all right, well, what I could do is I can make a couple exclusively for you and then we could sell them and then you know when i link back up i'll make them when i link back up we could negotiate like the price so they decide to convene and discuss the prospects of working on some collaborative content so it appears that they were going to work on some designing together before finalizing the financial side of it there's also something about a coloring book that i think urban wanted mcbroom to promote as well one that he gifted to mcbroom's daughter although mcbroom didn't want to take a picture with him which he found suspicious due to disassociation in a way so yes, yeah, so I'm like, oh, I'm gonna give a, intentionally I was just like, I'm gonna give a book to his daughter because I made the book for my daughter. Um, that's what inspired me. And I'm like, he has a little one, so I wanna give her a coloring book. So um, on my way out, when we got to the car, I give him the coloring book. I mean, said, fuck and, your um, book. I'm like, hey, you know, um, this is for your daughter. You know, just give it to her if you can, you know, take a picture. I'm, you know, just trying to promote the book for kids. He was like, um, he was like, dope, that's for sure, I got you. 
I was like, do you mind if I get a picture with you with the book? And he instantly was like, froze up for a second. was like, nah, nah, let's just wait, man. I only take professional pictures. And I was like, all right, for sure. The conversation continued over the following days with Urban presenting the designs to McBroom, who said he'd been busy. What was he busy with? Well, allegedly cop- Okay. Sure, that's sus. But what that other dude is doing is kind of fucked up too. Like- Especially if you don't have that, especially if you don't have that kind of relationship with someone and you're just like, it, like people roll up to me and want me to fucking promote their shit. You know what I mean? I'm like, I don't know what it is. You know what I mean? It's, it's pretty sharky. So. I will, I will, uh, put that disclaimer there. They're already collabing. It doesn't matter. They're, they're collabing as uh, on a, on a design, uh, on, on a t-shirt. This guy's like, yo, give this book to your daughter and take a photo with her. Copying Urban's own designs and then selling them himself. Even one regarding an ice cream truck that the Ace family allegedly nabbed for one of their subscriber specials just under a year later. And then a couple days later, I seen on YouTube, he had on the band, some bands that looked like my bands for him and his daughter. They was mad thick. They was mad thick. <laughs> it wasn't, I just know my work and I was like, I was like, Lika, come here, look at this. And she like, nah. nah and then, uh, so then I basically, that's what you see from the text. I hit him up. I'm like, bro, what's up with this? And those messages, what we'll put here is basically what inspired, you know, transpired. People do that, man. People get really influenced and then and rip you off so fast that I'm not the only one that's been done to, I'm pretty sure. But, um, so I kind of like, I took it with a grain of salt. Another thing was dope is I'm working on a truck that I'm about to drop that um, we can like basically do pop-ups where every band that I make exclusively for you, we pop up, we could sell them. And then, you know, this is love. So I tell them the whole get down about the truck and how I used to have a store. And now I feel like mobile is the new wave. And like, you know, and he's like, oh man, that shit is like, that shit sound genius. I felt some type of way. And that's when I was like, oh nah, I gotta, I gotta expose this dude because, you know, and then when it That is super fucked up though, um, straight up. He not only stole his designs, which is really fucked up, he stole his idea too. Like he stole his promotional idea too. It's crazy because when I posted about the truck, people was hitting me up, mad DMs, like, you're not the only one he ripped off. They had a subsequent confrontation in Instagram DMs, and Urban felt provoked eventually into making a video with the publication of this ice cream truck instant. It's hard to exactly measure the verifiability of these claims. It appears that a lot of what was said was true about the circumstances surrounding it. The difficulties come into the fact that it's difficult to exactly argue how much was plagiarized in a way, and how much McBroom just decided to do in his own style. But regardless, it's a shame they couldn't communicate these differences more effectively. And the whole ice cream truck scenario is a bit suspicious. Though, because of the vagueness in the language in the DMs that I've seen, it's difficult to once again say- <laughs> He said- He said, I ain't about to read all that. DMs that I've seen, it's difficult- <laughs> He literally did the meme, dude. He's like, I'm happy for you. Or really sad that that happened. Difficult to once again say exactly what's gone on. No one really admits to much. However, as said, this was about response. And once again, Austin demonstrated his exceptional class. Saw some headbands, hit him up, wanted to collab. He didn't want to collab with me because he tried to say that the headbands were expensive. He was bullshitting. He was trying to get over on me. So I said, you know what, bruh? You know what? I'm going to have my grandma make me my own headbands because everybody sell headbands in the stores. Everybody, all the stores sell headbands. You ain't the first headband maker. Who the fuck you think you are? You the inventor of headbands? You idiot. So I made my own headbands. He got mad because I posted it and I had a little following. He got mad I was wearing my headbands with L. He was like, this dude's a, he, he tried to take my idea. 
he took my the idea where you put the band around your head and you cross it and you tie it and you put it in your head. He stole that from me. Austin from the Ace family stole my art, and I don't like him. Don't like him, right? So then, a year later, just like Fred, I'm, I'm oh, the Ace family. Wait, I mean, this is pretty good. Like when you uh, when you get caught doing something. All you got to do is turn on your uh, fucking <clears throat> turn on your your Instagram live and just admit that you did everything that they said you were doing. But with like a with like a snarky tone so everybody understands that it's fake. That's pretty fucked up. I'm blowing up. I'm itching for that clout pill. I need that clout. Ace family blowing up. They got over 10 million subs. I'm trying to get some attention. He comes out after we have made an ice cream truck from SD Raps. They literally customized this random as fuck. They came up with it with their own brain. They made the ice cream truck literally in a day, right? We, we release it. He tries to come out and say, we took his idea from getting an ice cream truck. <laughs> you know how many ice cream trucks? I always thought the worst brained people were people on uh, subreddits that write like massive paragraphs debating people. But turns out it's the it's the fucking joy emoji spammers on the uh, Austin McBroom Instagram live. Like pretty much the fucking worst, dude. That's the real positivity we love to see. And I'm making a slight observation here, but he's a bit of a dick. Once again, I can't tell you if this is true because I haven't seen any real counter evidence. I'm open to alternative stories as the DMs were pretty vague, but he's just so angry and petulant about it that you kind of want to hate him. And this is one of the problems with the Ace family and most notable. Okay, this keeps... This keeps getting spammed. Uh, it, sorry, not spam, sorry. This keeps getting fucking posted. And I fully don't understand. Like, wh what's the deal with this fucking white horse? I need to see the actual video. Austin, lack of empathy. It was the same <clears throat> problem that made his response to the basketball competition feel disconnected from what people were trying to say. Now, it's clear this. My coworker was his private chef on his channel and they made him do laundry so he left like their laundry or his own laundry This isn't a formal response so I can't judge it too seriously but he just seems so angry at this guy because he sees anyone who criticizes like that as a clout chaser even though he was only provoked by one specific incident later which clearly bothered him it was clear Urban was upset at the time and the DMs even if they were vague showed a genuine pain and Austin taps into that during that conversation saying in the messages that Urban's coming at him like a woman a very classy man the contempt implies that he just can't acknowledge that he's ever made any missteps or why anyone would ever be upset at him and i think that rubs people the wrong way it rubbed me the wrong way disclaimer the problem of a lack of empathy is going to be a running theme in this video when you see that side of austin it does bring into contention the notion of motives for the way that he interacts with his audience he always speaks about him wanting to give back but when people might come at him from an angle that implies they feel dissatisfied with his behavior, he just doesn't seem to clock it. Selfless philanthropy in the way that the Ace family promotes is based on... Bro, his... Um, I, I have to say this, dude. His wife is so hot. I mean, he's a good-looking dude, too, but goddamn, dude. I, I just... It, I've been holding it in the entire time, dude. I'm sorry for others and it adds a shade of skepticism when they seem to demonstrate a lack of it in other areas it doesn't necessarily prove an inability but when you frame yourself in a way that anyone criticizing you is a bad faith act she used to date michael b jordan are you fucking kidding me okay i'm literally not wrong then dude michael b jordan is like top eight hottest person on the planet dude what a fucking downgrade, dude. Oh my god.
Michael B. Jordan is literally not even top eight, top five hottest dudes on the planet, straight up. And she went from Michael B. Jordan to this dude? Oh my God, that's got to be so sad. That's fucking so sad, dude. Not you simping for Catherine. I would just be so sad every day. Like, I would literally think about that every day. I'd be like, I had attractive as fuck, but not top five, Pepe. Michael B. Jordan, not top five. Are you insane? and true ace family members know how much they really do it just gives me greg paul vibe so whereas greg paul was overly defensive of destructive behavior from his children mcbroom seems okay chatters give me give me hotter dudes than michael b jordan if it's so fucking easy <laughs> Stop saying you. That's like a funny joke. Bro, this is crazy, dude. This is actually... Cr oh, my God. Also, the chatters were like, oh, she's not hot. You're fucking so stupid. You're so fucking stupid, chatters. Michael, be sure in a Walmart blue face. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. You said Walmart blue face, dude. Wow. Oh, shit. Okay, Michael B. Jordan in these fucking, in these shorts, though, that's a downgrade. This is basically agitprop to show you that he's not hot. Or wait, is he wearing, is that a towel? Maybe it's a towel. Nope, those are his actual shorts, dude. Yo, those are so long, dude. What are you doing? Those are so fucking long, Michael B. Jordan. What is, what is going on, dude? Chris Evans? <laughs> no. You said Chris Hemsworth, that's one thing, but Chris Evans is so vanilla, dude. You guys are crazy. Help, my mom's not home. Do you think this pokey I bought from the grocery store in Ohio is safe to eat? No, you're in Ohio. Like it matters, the fucking shorts police? MBJ is insanely hot and top five and every gay man would agree with you. I mean, I'm literally right. He is objectively one of the best looking dudes on the planet right now, currently. And people say Idris Elba. No, I think Michael B. Jordan is better looking than Idris Elba. <clears throat> Maybe he's just not a whore who wants to show off his slutty knees, bro. <laughs> yeah. Hide those slutty knees. <laughs> But there are non-famous people that look like MBJ. So? Henry Cable is very attractive. I'll, I'll give you that for sure. I think Tom Hardy is very attractive. I think uh, Killian Murphy is very attractive. I, I love the brubs, dude. I, I mean, my, my like... Top 10 hottest dudes list is mostly going to be brubs. It's true. Anyway, let's keep going. Seems to have a basic ego problem. I don't want to doubt that the Ace family... Where's K-pop boys? Um... How do I put this? I, uh... My taste in men, albeit irrelevant, given my um, cishet breeder status, is definitely defined by uh, Western beauty standards, for sure. So for me, like, um, I don't want to say it like, in an inappropriate way. Is, can you say androgyny? Is that like an appropriate term there, or is that fucked up? Like... Or, uh, femme, like, uh, you know, more 
uh, more feminine uh, looks, like smooth skin, shit like that. I don't really... doesn't do it for me. Asian men can seem a little feminine? Dude, that is literally not what I'm saying. We're talking about fucking BTS, dude. Like, that is a great look for millions and millions of people. But, like... BTS is not just Asian men, okay? That's li that's literally like you are talking about twinks. I, not even twinks, like very. Um, I think androgyny is the right term to use there, is it not? Like non-conforming to any gender standards. Ooh, ASAP Rocky. That's true. ASAP Rocky is is uh, very attractive as well. <laughs> I hope chatters don't think all Asian men look like fucking K-pop idols, dude. You're gonna <laughs> you're gonna be very disappointed if that's your if that's what you think is going on. <laughs> yeah, dude, all white men look like Robert Pattinson or Pattinson. They clearly do a fair bit for their audience. It's clear given their interaction, and I respect that. But it's hard to deny that they have fallen short at points, and when you fall short again and again and again, the criticism will begin to accumulate. And as who are your top five women? Your mom, your mom, your mom, your mom, your mom said austin isn't one for official statements unless they're completely unrelated to the actual criticism what do i mean well in spite of the fact that the ace family seldom demonstrates sympathy for their critics they're more than ready to expect it themselves and often at opportune times so i wanted to focus on this for the next part I've already talked about a couple instances where they seem to undermine standards that many would consider standard for that of a creator their size. But it does not end there. As a successful creator, it's likely that you may want to engage your audience through other mediums. This is something that the Ace Family decide to pursue with the launch of their Ace Family app. Now, looking at it in its current state, reviews are overwhelmingly positive, so hopefully any problems there have been resolved. However, at the time, there were many people who had felt ripped off due to the lack of content. There were a couple of reasons for this, at least as I understand, and therefore the Ace family felt it was a good time to- Catherine was on escort in Miami around the same time you lived there? Damn, good for her, dude. Hey. Good for her. Queen. Take a break. This is actually I wish we happening. met. Um, we will be taking a break from YouTube. Not telling you guys how long just yet, but we are taking a break. During our break, which is why we said it wasn't really going to be a break, we'll be focusing on our app along with our merch. For all the people who have the Ace Family membership, we cannot thank you guys enough for all the love and support that you continue to show us. Just know we have a lot coming. We're not going to say too much. We just want to upload exclusive content and show you guys. As many people interpreted this, it meant that they were going to be making content for the Ace Family app and therefore creating a paywall between them and some of their less privileged viewers. As said, there were complaints that they weren't providing enough content on the app to justify the additional payment. So basically, it felt like they were kind of failing on both fronts. Generally, unless you're really strapped for cash, it's good to make exclusive content as a bonus rather than taking it away from your public content. However, a break is a break and in their defense, it's hard to say whether they're comments were in reference to working on plans of their app or just the content itself. I feel that this situation was likely a boiling over of other situation, but it's clear that the Ace family at this point after a run of controversies probably had enough. This was all occurring in January of 2019, one of their most controversial months, with reference to the 100k basketball competition and another incident involving the purchasing of a phallic lollipop for a child, which we'll get to later. Now, many people were focusing on the app at this point, but when they announced the break, I found it coincided very conveniently with the announcement of what is now known as the Ace Family documentary, Welcome to Our Life. Now, to defend them on this front, this was probably a conceptual idea before the drama. But given their selected break that ends with their return, it's very easy to think where their focus in the ensuing month may have been. I don't know how much they worked on their merch or their app, but I think they had a bit of focus on this too. 
I like documentaries on principle. Hell, there's even a documentary out there on me. And it won't be the last time that I try and make that sort of thing. From a filmmaking perspective- Wait, what happened with their app chat? I missed it. I was peeing. I was doing a pee pee. We're not getting an app from me. they can be really great but i think one of my biggest problems with documentaries even those like the ones from shane dawson is that they can easily control the narrative and are often trying to make a statement on the actual character of an individual rather than any greater message and therefore it can be utilized particularly by larger youtubers for propaganda reasons it's very easy for an individual to own a narrative when they own the camera, even when they say it's behind the scenes. Behind the scenes documentaries were often gritty and characters were sometimes unlikable because they had a unique value in their performance that no one else could substitute and therefore their whole behavior came with them. The modern day YouTube documentary can be very easily hijacked by an individual to elicit sympathy from their audience. And that's the impression I received when I heard about the Ace Family documentary. How do they follow through on it? And what we do is so difficult. I feel like people don't understand that there's really nothing private in our lives anymore. I decided to take on the burden of watching these episodes of it in case they said anything of interest. And the first episode was harmless enough. They talk about moving around and privacy issues. And although I wouldn't exactly consider $1,500 a month apartment a struggle, it was all right. I understand that as public figures, they probably have a stressful life. Wait, they said that they, they were struggling because they were living in a $1,500 apartment? Bro, I lived in a fucking kitchen of a frat house, dude. I mean, it's like annoying when people are like comparing, uh, you know, comparing uh, uh, oppression or struggle, I guess, but. My feelings were slightly mellowed by the end of the first episode. However, they went. You're not one to talk. Yeah, I knew it was going to. I knew I knew someone was going to be like, dude, shut the fuck up. Dude, you're not one to talk, bro. Can you explain to Aiden? He doesn't know why. What is this? This is by far the worst month of my life. I don't understand why I'm getting absolutely shitted on right now in my life. I don't get it. I just don't. straight into it with the second whenever we do something good whenever we give back or we try to help people like no one ever really talks about that but as soon as like something comes up to where the ace family is looked at in a bad light or there's some like drama stirred up or some controversy stirred up about us and it's not necessarily true like people hop on the bandwagon so quick and and that shit will make the news rather than the, all the good things that we've done here you go i gave i gave aiden some some kind words of encouragement okay keep your head up king I guess this is what me <laughs> Keep your head up, King. Your durag is falling. <laughs> that was a good one, Chatter. Oh, Jesus Christ. And he would consider an indirect response. It's completely coated with multiple other narratives and is what many YouTubers will do if they don't feel like they can give a direct response to the criticism. They'll basically just create some straw man and say, wow, the haters do suck. It reminds me of that Jake Paul rap. You know the one. About this dude, I literally I memory hold this dude. This is so good. 
Oh, it's so good. It's so bad. It's the worst thing. This is way worse than every day, bro. It sucks that media is often oriented towards the negative, but that's only because the negative actions aren't what you'd expect from an individual. It's out of the ordinary, and therefore people are more interested when a person indulges it. Bro, rap era of YouTube was, I think, the worst, right? Like the rap era of YouTube had to have been just the absolute worst thing that happened in the history of rap or YouTube. In it. That's not saying that you're a bad person, and mob mentality can sometimes lead to the wrong impression. We're all aware of that now. But to act as if all the backlash that you receive is representative to, for example, people being upset over tweets made seven. Wait, what? Backlash that you receive is representative to, for example, people being upset. Can't do black girls because uh, after I'm done, I'm gonna have to pay for their hair. Hashtag all bad. Wait, they got mad at it? Oh, oh no. I mean, it's not even, if a fucking white person is saying that, then it's different. It's like, one, he's saying it in 2011, and two, dude, I I'm not even gonna touch this Discord, actually, fuck it. I'm not. Because, like, the people that get really mad at this always get mad at me whenever I talk about this sort of stuff and say, don't get involved in black people's businesses, you fucking Yakubian W, okay? But it's just like it literally from 2011 and and also like me and my black my very black wife are pissed I wonder what happened to that guy we don't all have like weave if it's natural is a dumb statement no that's not the point no he's just like trying to make a fucking joke but yep, there it is. Black men hate black women. I don't want to fucking get involved in this, okay? Uh, but that's, it's literally, there's, there's a lot of fucking discourse on, in, in, uh, on black Twitter about this very subject. And, and uh, black women get very upset and mad at uh, black men and black men get upset at black women. That's why I said, I'm, um, you know. Set over tweets made seven or eight years ago is extremely deceptive. Does it mean that those people don't exist? Not a and Lucy scare me away from black girls, blondes with blue eyes that are looking more appealing. Oh, at all, but they're certainly not representing the majority of what people are likely bothered by. Basically, this whole scene felt like Austin wanted to create something vague enough to invalidate and engrave it in the docuseries that throws in other, maybe very legitimate struggles in an attempt to elicit sympathy from an audience that probably hasn't thought about the distinction between legitimate criticism and illegitimate criticism. People go out of their way to make something seem so different of what it is. <laughs> Hassan, not gonna touch this. Proceeds to lightly fondle. Listen, there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of child uh, children of Yakub in this community. Okay, at least tangentially learning about, at least tangentially learning about like uh, black Twitter feuds, about misogynoir versus uh, you know, I don't know. I just I watch everything. Okay, from afar, quietly, and and uh, I. I'm here to impart my knowledge. I literally just don't know who you said, Yakub. Did a snap of a Leia, like me playing with her, her lay on her stomach, having tummy time, and now I'm getting bashed for it. What do you mean? What are people like people saying something? Like, yeah, they're saying I'm such a bad dad because I laid my newborn on her stomach when it's literally just tummy time. Like everyone knows about tummy time. Are you kidding? I laid her on her stomach. To give her tummy time, I'm sitting there like making a cute snap with her, and now people are bashing me for it. Wait, why? Like, this is why Catherine and I hesitate to 
film our kids. He's representing the criticism that he receives by talking about this situation that I don't think anyone with a brain is going to be thinking about. Then there's the implication spread to the point that this is the sort of stuff being spoken about in the serious videos on him. He shows a reel of those videos, which it really isn't. I get that people being overly critical of mob mentality, they are all things that grind many of our gears, but to throw videos and to create this umbrella is dishonest and playing the sad music and implying sympathy with a title like the truth about the ace family is about as heavy-handed as they come like i have said before we're human and we've we've made some mistakes i mean like we're not perfect right but it doesn't mean that we're bad people <laughs> youtuber apology videos dude oh jesus christ dude with the fucking you got the fuchsia filter on you got like you know dramatic violin playing in the background hands fucking clasped uh tightly together emotional dude we are f we're human people you know and and something coming out and circulating again is literally purely just to make us look bad here you are in a scene where they almost come to terms with their imperfections but then they flip it onto their head and say anyone Bro, if you're doing an apology video and you got like three different angles that you're switching in between, like, it doesn't seem authentic, dude. I'm just saying, like, FaZe Jarvis did it better, okay? That's all I'm going to say. One camera, you tears come in like at 3.5. when we're releasing this stuff is just trying to make us look bad which given the criticism that i've discussed already is a fundamentally redundant statement given that some of these criticisms came from your own fans it's such an arrogant attitude that they try to masquerade in the oh woe is the struggle of the ace family narrative Listen, there are problems that come with fame. I can get why unnecessary attention and criticism can bother you, but to speak generally and then provide an extreme circumstance to try and explain why you're actually suffering is like Al Capone asking why so many people were out to get him when all he did was evade taxes. Also, do you know how to say the word frustrated? Because I'm feeling pretty frustrated right now. Frustrate us. It's frustrating. And that's the frustrating thing. Next part. There's good criticism and bad criticism. If you can't separate it, I don't really have much respect for throwing an umbrella over it and arguing that they were the true victims. A lot of the criticisms that they received could have been resolved fairly easily. Only donating 75,000 charity? Donate an extra 25. Holding a basketball shootout where fans feel misled? Do another one involving your fans, or at least do something involving your fans as compensation. People feel like you've screwed them over? Don't be a dick and go out and just talk a bunch of crap it's not rocket science and i get you don't want to yield on every occasion but there's a point where principle pushes into stubbornness and you just end up looking unreasonable and hell when you actually oh my god someone said ableism oh you were fucking baiting make a mistake and you receive criticism that you can't respond to apologize or at least admit you got something wrong the phallic lollipop is a prime example of something that could have just been solved with a tweet saying it was inappropriate wait, my bad but it wasn't the ace family are more than happy to admit they've made wait did i miss the phallic lollipop what's that what the fuck's that Was it when I was peeing? Mistakes, but they'll never. Never tell you which specific ones because they don't want to actually admit to anything. I don't think it's that demanding. And that's one of the things that I think just shows to me that McBroom has a significant ego problem. That they just don't want to ever say they've done anything specific wrong. And if you make. Dude, I know what a phallic lollipop is, okay? I know. Thank you for describing to me what phallic means. Oh, penis lollipop, homie. Oh, shit. No, no shit, dude. That's crazy. I know what phallic means as a word. I just didn't hear the part where, like, he went over it. So I was thinking maybe I was peeing and I missed Any it. specific criticisms, they will blow it up to a greater character implication and say, how dare you? We're not bad people. Not everyone's saying you're bad people. Some of these critics are even your fans.
It's very easy to see their whole documentary series as a beg for sympathy towards conflicted fans who may be on the fence about their behavior, and I personally find it rather manipulative. The documentary was probably the most elaborate way to try and retain fans. It was probably done in the light of the success these Shane Dawson videos had yielded too, so it was a win-win. However, it's not the first time that people have accused them of baiting for sympathy. No, there was an even more notorious incident in the year prior, not too long after they had received a bit of stick for the 75k basketball situation. When something happens to you, it's natural for you to receive people's sympathies, which is why sometimes people are a bit suspicious about the motives of those who have terrible stuff happen to them not too long after they've received some criticism. This was the case for the Ace family, who had their house robbed in July of 2018, amongst a fairly decent wave of criticism. On one hand, this was met with a lot of sympathy, and people understood why the Ace family were distraught over this. However, very quickly, suspicion began to boil up around the circumstances surrounding this incident. Did the Ace family arrange or stage their own break-in? However, ladies and gentlemen, this is a crime scene, and we need someone on the case. So I've assigned Detective Jonathan Jawbury to deal with this matter and to see if we can work out what can be said about the situation. I suggest we pass it over to him to present it and his subsequent findings. Parents often play a critical part in forming their child's first relationships, acting as a role model and exemplifying the types of behaviors they wish to see exhibited by their own one day. As such, children will always turn out best when their parents are there to nurture, love, and support them throughout their personal experiences. Which is why we need more parents shoving cameras down their kids' throats for the sole purpose of internet clout. Uh, that was a joke. Uh, we, don't, we don't need that at all, actually. But regardless, family vlogs have always been an integral aspect of YouTube as we know it. From the Shaytards all the way down to the Inghams, families will continue to play a significant role in the online zeitgeist. And although it isn't necessarily for me, I understand the appeal. People, children especially, crave the types of connections that can be easily accessed through internet personalities. When you watch Cole and Sav, for example, you aren't just another audience member, you're a part of their lives, adding to the immense power Bro, why is every family YouTuber have those, like, dead eyes, dude? What's going on there? What's up with that? Like, they, they all have, like, that... I mean, even the fucking baby's got dead eyes, dude. What's going on here? How are these figures... They're always so perfectly manicured. And I don't mean their fingies. Like, I just mean in general. They're, like, so perfectly quaffed and, and, and manicured and everything is just like, it's just so strange to me, man. Is often wheeled. Kids and families trust that these types of creators are being open and honest with them, giving them an elevated responsibility, which is why many believe these channels deserve to be held accountable for their actions, hence why the Ace family has been the subject of such intense scrutiny. Ace hey, family, so we just got home. We've been at Disney all day. Dude, I'm, I have a hot take here that uh, kind of betrays what we're doing here, but like anything beyond just like kind of making fun of these people, depending on what they're like, what the, the crimes that they've committed are, anything beyond just like making fun of them is a little bit overkill. Now, I might be saying that way too soon because like it seems like they staged the robbery against themselves or something okay uh but maybe it's because like the essay format they pile on a lot of the criticism and some of it's just like not that bad you know what i mean of course you defend big content creators I, I mean, it's a joke. I don't need to respond to it. Hassan, it's just a joke. Why are you going to address that? Hey. And someone broke into our house. On August 16th, 2018, the Ace family made waves in the community by uploading their famed Someone Broke Into Our House vlog, where the title pretty much tells you all you need to know. We literally walk in the house. The house is pitch black. We're tired as hell because we've been at Disney for the past six hours. And I'm holding the L in my arms. Captain's coming in behind me. Like I said, the house is pitch black. I put the keys down the counter and I hear some like glass dropping. And I look over and it's a back door shattered. So I told Catherine, the girls, get the fuck out of there. We left. 
had to run to the neighbors, talk to the neighbors, and now, like I said, the cops are finally here. Um, and hopefully, they didn't take too much shit. They're vlogging. Oh God. <laughs> Documents the aftermath of a supposed home invasion that took place while the three were spending some quality time together at Disneyland. The half hour long video depicts police cars, smashed belongings, ransacked closets, and of course Austin and Catherine trying their absolute best to save face in the wake of a crisis. Oh, they took all my purses! They took what? They took all my purses. Motherfuckers. Oh, I don't give a shit about purses, so... Baby, they took your stuff. You okay? It's okay, we don't need none of that. We don't care about that. All we care about is you, mama. They both make a clear effort to drive home the fact that, oh, things can be replaced, but people, <laughs> people can't. Which is nice, you know? I mean, I don't think you'll find many who, who disagree with that sentiment. But to me, they just seem a little too calm and collected to have just found out their $10 million home was burglarized. Which was just the beginning of the suspicions more and more people would start to air. Our merch box? They went inside the merch box bro what were they looking for we did have no valuables literally the only thing valuable is my daughter and they try to take the YouTube play button. It's true that robberies can happen to anyone, anywhere, at any given time. But to ignore the glaring circumstances surrounding the family at the time of their break-in would be counterproductive. As James was quick to mention earlier, people do crazy things for sympathy, especially those who make their living by uh, earning clicks online. Lord knows Austin and Catherine are no strangers to clickbait. Hell, even if the robbery did happen, they still went out of their way to stage a whole ass thumbnail to get that sweet, sweet sweet ctr oh my god dude. bro they had the daughter went doing out the of their way to stage ball, a whole dude. ass thumbnail are you fucking kidding me oh oh my god dude that's insane hey yo come on come on put your put your hand in front of your face come on baby just do that like they look solemn and sad like do they get the officers? Do they get the fake cops to take that photo, you think, chat? Like, who took the photo? To get that sweet, sweet CTR. It strikes me as a bit odd that just a- Witch Talk is mad at you? Oh, no. I literally, like, did some shit to, like, help Hassan. And he called me a chatter. You don't know pain. I'm the Joker, baby. What? I literally, like, did some shit to, like, uh, what the fuck? I'm saying she's hot, chat. What the fuck? A few weeks prior to this incident, the whole basketball controversy went down in which people accused the family of stealing money from a charity event. So would it be within reason for someone in their position to stage a fake tragedy for the simple aim of gaining pity? Yes. But does that mean without a shadow of a doubt that the robbery was faked? No. Not wait, 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 wait. Send me the OG video chat. I need to know. Uh, what is it? House broken into. What? What is this, the Ace family? Someone told me love was only. Oh my God! They have their own intro music. In the movies that don't exist in real life these days. No. But you showed me. Dude, they literally, oh my God. They have like the whole, like they just shoot this like a, like a, like a soap opera. If I only just find the faith I need to believe. Anything is possible. Kind of slaps though. You want it bad enough. 
enough, no, this sky ain't too high, test your limits, you can feel unstoppable, incredible, oh, still, I can see, I'm so ready. I like that he puts his hand on the camera, like, it's enough, enough time for filming, like, now we're doing family time, except, you know, the entire thing is filmed. Like their whole okay. Anyway, I can see. Like, like hey, you can't see this part. Like I'm kissing my wife. Except like, this entire video is about how they staged the robbery on themselves. And uh, here is uh, 28 minutes of that. You know what I mean? That's wild. Okay, so let's see some of these thumb thumb cops. Okay. Looking for. Oh, that I can't believe they stole our merch, dude. <laughs> So, is that legal? Damn, yep. guys. It is? Mm -hmm. that that? I know. Is that legal, isn't it? And I guess the cop just said TMZ is already outside. Well, let's check L's room. L, baby, let's. TMZ's already outside? I don't know if the cops are fake or not. But then again, we already know. We already fucking know that I'm not very good at, uh, you know, figuring out if someone's a fake cop and someone's a real cop. Cause my arms, Catherine's coming in. By. But like I said, this is this is scary. That's how you know. Up, oh, hold up. Oh shit! But like I said, this is this is scary. Chatters in the TikTok comments. Parasocial relationships are really out of hand, especially during lockdown. And then the best way to avoid that pain is to subscribe at the top of the hour. Oh man, that does remind me. It is top of the fucking hour, dude. Thank you, chatter. And that means it's time for a six second ad break, baby. Yep. That's what that means. Now, of course, uh, if you'd like to no longer see said ads, you can subscribe. I'm going to give a, 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 a hat tip to the fucking chatter that actually, you know, sent that my way. Imagine, imagine baiting 10 hours in advance on TikTok. You know what I mean? God damn. We need to strike on giving him transition chat to make him think it's uh, of his own. What do you mean? That was pretty good. We have done a lot. I, I did a fucking, I did a segue inside of a PO box. And chatter was like, I'm going to one up that. I'm going to literally come from a different platform 10 hours ahead of time and link it to you. Top of the fucking hour. Twitch Prime is free. You can avoid ads that way. Adblock VPN. Here's the ad now. Pretty good. So this does look like how you know. the fake cop cars that they it's have. But they, uh, I don't know. That looks real, yeah. man. That does look real. That look. That looks real. No ads in the Philippines? Yeah, no. That's why I say VPN. Like a VPN to make it seem like you're from fucking... Dude, there's not a single cop here. What the fuck? That's weird. Was it locked in or no? It was, no, it was partially locked. Like it wasn't, it was turned, but not. Is that, at, is that mail for here? Yeah. It says Ace Family all over it. Our merch box? They went inside the merch box. Bro. Yeah, they're not showing any of the cops' faces, so. That bald one, I want to know. 
I mean, he's got some shit on him. Does he not have a gun? I don't oh, think he has a gun. That would not be up here. They brought that bitch from downstairs. Yeah, they took all. All my bags too. All my shit in here. Damn. Well, that no means they cash. Have a car. We don't keep cash. That means they had a car. Yeah. Carry all those bags. Okay, now let's see. I don't have jewelry, so they didn't. Oh, they left they... L's ring. Yeah, they left L's. I don't have jewelry. I don't like expensive things. Why is the cop making small talk with me? Yes. The only thing I cared about in this entire house. Yes. Thank cool. you. Thank you. Wait, who's this guy? That's not a cop, dude. Watch out, Austin McBroom. The robber is still there with you. <laughs> Okay, that's not the same cop from the fucking shit, but... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, What was the cop re uh, request thing? Like, what was the website chat? Was it LA Cop Hire? No, what was it? The website where... The cop Shop LA, right? Yeah. They have their cast on here. No, that's on Production Hub. That's not what I want. I want the actual website, dude. What the fuck? Oh, here it is. Hold on, hold. Let's see. Uh, he's not coming up on here. Up. Oh, is that him? Officer Quirrell? No, Officer Quirrell is a little bit older. What tweet? What teams available? <laughs> they left your ring, baby. They left your ring. I love you. Hey, listen, is that legal? Damn, yeah. guys. It is. Mm -hmm. Got I know. Hold on. You guys are saying this video is from three years ago, but like, who cares? Uh, this website hasn't been updated since like 1917, okay? Officer Diaz? No. Are you sure they're from LA? Yeah, they are. I think they are wearing vests in this. Good one. Their cop cars are literally like... Their cop cars are unironically identical. Like, they, it's just crazy. So, like, the LAPD cop cars, though. So, it's hard to... They have the same uniforms and the same cop cars. Uh, 
check archive? No, I don't care about the archive. Give me the, uh... I need to find, like, uh, like a real L.A. cop car. Wouldn't the cops sweep the house to see if the burglar was there? Yeah, I, I mean, know. Why is that legal, isn't it? And I guess the cops just said TMZ is already outside. Well, let's check L's room. That's how much we care about you guys, and the fact that we can't even get the little privacy that we have. Okay, the rest of this fucking video is just him talking to a camera. Anyway, alright, let's get back to this. Necessarily, which is why we need to look at the details of the proceeding before we do anything else. At first, people were already suspicious of the way the police behaved on camera. Some viewers even going so far as to insist that they weren't even a part of the NBA Finals are starting in eight minutes. Game five, do you think we can wrap this up? I gotta go. Okay, get the fuck out of here then. What do you mean? The LAPD. Let's turn the lights on. You didn't take your wallet? Mostly everything that's ransacked was upstairs. What? Yeah. Cool. My guy right here, he's helping. Put us out. He's part of the Ace family. A theory that was later reinforced when a fan dug up evidence of a place called Top Cop Shop in LA renting out fake police and squad cars on August 16th. The same night, the robbery report. I literally didn't have to do this. Like, I, I didn't have to go through all of this at all. The video does it already. ...reportedly took place. Catherine was quick to dismiss the smear campaign against her family on Twitter, though you can't really blame people for asking the question, can you? Renting reenactors is not particularly uncommon in reality TV, leading many to wonder if they had just recreated the incident in an attempt to make their situation appear more dramatic for YouTube. Perhaps the family had suffered an actual home invasion a day prior and, being unsatisfied with the initial footage, rented out fake cops to hype it up for the cameras after all oh it is so i was right the that initial guy is footage him. rented out fake cops to hype it up for the cameras yeah damn the ace family robbery fake one of my followers tagged decided to email the company who are known for police actors my name is debbie miles i'm austin mcbruce financial advisor we recently hired your company to provide a few actors to start a video shoot in la would you please copy me an invoice on file for these services? Customer's name is Austin McBroom. Thank you for your time. No shot. You were wrong. Chat was right. How did you miss this? Aiden, you want me to be brubophobic. That's what you want. Hey, it's not just checking in to clear our schedule. This segment is done at 6.30, correct? Gotta wrap it up. After all, it couldn't have been completely fabricated. The real police report was posted by Keemstar on Twitter. Austin Lee If there's a real police report, then it's not fabricated. Like, somebody actually came over and... and actually... Did a fucking police report. Later appeared in an Instagram live following the incident, showing unedited footage of someone checking for fingerprints the next morning. Although it's pretty standard protocol to check for those kinds of things immediately after the incident takes place as to not disrupt the crime scene. So, you know, that's a little sus. He also announced that the family would be moving to a new house since they no longer felt safe in their current home, leading some to assume that they simply trashed the house and left it. Though that's a bit of a stretch considering it took almost an entire year for the move to officially happen. But even then, it's not completely off the table. And we never saw any footage of the actual robbery. A $10 million house is sure to come with cameras and alarm system at the very least. But despite their abundant coverage of the situation, they never saw- People are like, bro, the cops walked all over evidence. What, you think when a fucking robbery happens in a house, the LAPD's like, let's bust out the gloves, folks. This is an active crime scene now. Like- no, dude, those motherfuckers are incompetent as shit, dude. <laughs> like, that's not, that's not exactly uh, to show that someone is a fake cop, you know what I mean? The only thing that's weird is that they never have Los Angeles Police Department as a tag on their arms. That's the biggest sussy baka thing there. Real cops have badges that indicate 
Like, they have badges that indicate that they are from the LAPD, and none of the fucking fake cops ever do. That's the big difference, okay? That's the only thing that shows that this is most likely fake cops. Like, it doesn't show their fucking precinct. None of them have ranks. Like, it doesn't have the little... The rank. You know what I mean? Okay, maybe they're all, like... I don't know how to describe it. Because impersonating an officer is a fucking crime? Yeah, but these guys literally get paid for it, so... Actual police report screenshot. Occupation celebrity? What? Stolen loss, $28,730. Estimated damage, $1,000. Sliding glass door, broken window, instrument tool used, unknown. Unknown suspects broke rear sliding glass door, ransacked residence, took multiple items, and fled in unknown direction. Damn, bro, Austin McBroom is 5'11". So much as mentioned any of that. It just comes off so orchestrated to me. I don't know. Here we are being so honest with you guys. Like, you guys say the craziest rumors about us. Like, the craziest things. Someone is making a fake receipt of, like, us paying for cop actors like these are real cops that were in our home like that's against the law to do that to fake a receipt to fake an invoice that's against the law yeah, that's crazy that's slander we have to leave our house like we can't be here anymore as much as i'd love to continue living in my home we have to leave because it's not safe. Looking at the evidence, I believe something must have happened to them. But even that still leaves room for more unanswered questions. Things like why didn't these robbers take the diamond play button? And why was Austin filming the entire time as if to prove he wasn't hiding anything? Someone in their position probably wouldn't have behaved as orderly, given the tremendous shock and grief. Bro, if your house gets broken into, you don't just like fucking you know, bust out the camera and, and film, you know what I mean? You, like, that's crazy. Or make a, or make a thumbnail, you know what I mean? Or this is Aiden Ross all over again, dude. Real cops come up for a fucking stage robbery and then they bring in the fake cops to film afterwards. that must come along with getting your mansion ransacked while you're conveniently out at Disneyland? The Ace family is in such a position to where they can literally lie about anything to their audience, and they're not really going to be pressed for the real truth. The dishonesty of this family runs deep, and whether this was staged or not, people have every reason to question the parts of their life they publicize. Excuse me, barely even said shit when his house got broken into? Uh, yeah. Because when your fucking house they used to live in gets broken into, it's a traumatic experience, dude. You're like, you're not fucking, you don't want people to know. A lot of, I've told you guys this before. A lot of stuff happens behind the scenes to streamers. And you don't know about it. Even no matter how parasocial uh, this relationship goes. There's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes and you don't want the fucking people to, to gain any sort of like excitement out of like getting to you. So people don't mention it. And plus to deter copycats, people don't mention that shit usually. The fact that this all came only two weeks after some of Austin's old problematic tweets resurfaced, coupled with their apparent inability to simply own up to their own mistakes, is enough to make anyone suspicious. But would this family really go through all the trouble of hiring fake cops to drum up a sensationalist story for the sole purpose of seeking reconciliation among their fan base? That's something I'll let you decide for yourself. That was 
some intense detective work, but I'm proud to have YouTube's finest on the case, which I'm aware is the equivalent of kindergarten cop. But I think John would make an excellent Arnold Schwarzenegger, if Arnold Schwarzenegger was a tiny twink, of course. But we love him all the same. I think probably the most frustrating part of the whole ordeal was once again their reaction to the idea that people may be doubting this. It's the same routine that we've seen time and time again, and you think they'd just be a bit more understanding of what's come their way, but they just don't have a clue how to fully get people to understand their perspective. Austin and Catherine have never been afraid to present an image of themselves to the audience, but they're also masters in orchestrating the representation of their lives. So house intrusions, whether legitimate or not, is obviously going to be seen by many as part of the melodrama, and many others as a distraction to how they actually act behind the scenes. However, even if they fake their intention for the good deeds, they're good deeds. I mean, if they provide... Someone can literally be shot dead, and most people's first instinct is to start recording it. That's just how people work these days. Bro. He didn't record it with his phone camera, dog. He busted out the fucking Sony 4K with the tripod extension connected to the underbelly so he could get the fucking best angles. What are you talking about? That's not like... I don't think Austin McBroom was uh, recording the cops out of fear that he might get fucking brutalized by the police. You know what I mean? They literally staged a thumbnail afterwards. the right message for aspiring creators and parents then that can't be a bad thing right but are they really truly virtuous are they really who we should be looking up to i'm just not entirely sure they are Now, as mentioned at the start, the move away from wholesome role models towards characters that inspire more cynicism is something that is impossible to avoid. The Ace family is no real exception to that rule. And I understand that, but I would also posit that in spite of this, family channels should be held to a marginally higher standard than those. I know how David did this with a person literally in his house at the same time. There are four cop cars on my street right now. I told the cop that I'm a vlogger and he goes, Jesus Christ. Hey, if you're actually this much of a crazy idiot, I may have to call you back to be in my vlogs full time. Okay, so what's going on? That's his. That's his. The brush is his. That gun probably scared you guys, my bad. Damn it. He went on my couch. It's a dope couch. Well, it looks like he tried to set up my security system. That's kind of ironic. Oh, he did that. <laughs> Nothing happened here, which pisses me off because this is my roommate Alex's room and he deserves some stuff to happen to him. <laughs> we can invite him back in and have him sleep on my roommate's bed. Oh, did you guys find my friend? Friends weed? No. I good, yeah, there's no Is such this thing. fake? <laughs> it's legal now, so. Oh, it is? Good, then I don't have to hide the coke. Either you want him to go to jail for breaking into your house or not. It's very simple. Can I meet him first? This is that grind. Like, these are fake cops? Bro, these are fake cops, dude? Yeah. Okay, this is not an app that you can. <laughs> Babe, I killed them. I killed them with my bare arms. Babe, so Thank you. Oh my god, can I come over? <laughs> yeah. This must be a separate call for Jason. That's a bad joke. I don't know why I made that. Hey, if breaking into houses doesn't work out. So we hired this dude to like break into his house. Not actually fake. He got the guy arrested. Wait. Dude, there is no, there is no fake, like, EM, EMT, dude. They don't, unless there is one. I mean, maybe there is one. I don't think this is fake. Oh, I just bit my tongue. Not anymore. You can always join the dirty gang. Next time, if you want to come over, just shoot me a text. Bye, buddy. Hope you find your dad. Okay, to be fair, like, that's, that's terrible, dude. Why the fuck would you say, come back anytime, dude? You don't want to fucking... You'd never want to give people, you know, you never want to get people excited. The merch on the fake criminal. Yeah, what Did happened there? Your merch? Wait, yeah, I... I <laughs> Yo, you think that's funny now, but I get sales, bitch. Nick, you just have a lot of relatives. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so confused by this. Demean him for no reason. What the fuck do you mean demean him for no reason? The dude broke into his house if it's fucking real, then like...
That's the least of uh, that dude's concerns, dude. What the fuck? Some of you are ridiculous, dude. Okay, ah, uh, dude, this is too confusing for me. Okay, fuck. Those of Jake Paul, because although they are more than worthy of their criticism, like a lot of it, Jake Paul is at least the representation of a dumb, privileged frat boy who just moved in with his friends. His antics represent a fleeting part of young adulthood that will eventually capitulate itself. He has the inspirational garbage, but it's so unbelievably inept that no one really buys it. With the Ace family, what they're doing is presenting this family life, which, as mentioned, a cultural staple to many, a necessary stage of growth and a part of everyone's life, whether positive or negative. On the one hand, I would hope that the Ace family realizes their behavior has an effect on probably the workings of many other families. On the other hand, it makes what we're about to talk about worse. I think this is what particularly vex people in the next couple of situations that we're going to be discussing. Let's talk about the lollipop. This situation once again occurred in January of 2019, as mentioned. Austin was taking a child out shopping. They go into what I assume is a novelty shop or a more adult-oriented shop, and then, shock horror, on his Snapchat story, this is posted. He finds himself in some hijinks. What'd you say? What? What'd you say? What are you trying to get to? You love what? Oh, God. <laughs> you don't need that. Oh, my God, dude. What the fuck? That's so... So fucking gross, dude. What the fuck's he doing? Real Christian vibes there. I can't show it to you because I don't want to get fucking banned. Oh no. I can't believe she wanted the penis shaped lollipop. What madness. How on earth? It's a fucking cock shaped lollipop. Okay, that's what it is. Did that happen? Are you really making me buy this lollipop right now? You really want it? Yeah. Oh god. <laughs> Please, bro, put that in a bag right now. <laughs> Keep that in the bag forever. Do not show that to anybody, okay? okay? That's your little secret. Guys, I'm in so much trouble. But she said she's gonna steal it if I didn't buy it, so better me buy it. Oh, damn it, Austin. He had to buy it for her or else she was gonna steal it. Damn, McBroom really got put in a tough situation here. I'm sure that everyone bought that very sincere explanation. They didn't. And there was immediate criticism for Austin because he bought a penis-shaped lollipop for a child and then gave it to them. It was extremely inappropriate and not the sort of thing that you... Ted Cruz, Austin McBroom, my daughter is the reason why I did this. Come on, Chad, I gotta make some political jokes, you know what I mean? That's how you know someone's got good moral fiber when they just straight blame their fucking, like, little baby child daughter. You would hope a family YouTuber to be doing. It's hard for me to be particularly angry. I was much angrier when Jake Paul just shouted at babies, so maybe I'm just desensitized to penis. But I do agree with the criticism. No doubt Austin clearly wanted a funny story, but knew he gets stuck duck so try to pin the responsibility on the child i think it illuminates one of the biggest problems with children in family vlogs in their little documentary series they say this yeah like if Elle didn't like being in front of the camera if she was like oh we would not like be the running, ace family like if she was running away and she wasn't like you know interacting we would not be the ace family no we wouldn't 100 percent. it would never be the same effect yeah. and i just find it as a comment rather redundant Children that young can't exactly say whether they want to be on camera, even if they appear to enjoy it. Austin and Catherine constantly talk about how their life has changed due to the attention in the series, but hardly take a look at how it's going to affect a child at one of their most vulnerable times in their life. And when you're someone like Austin who clearly finds some value in the drama, you know, not being criticized for it, 
could have genuine ramifications on your children. It's not like I'm against having children in family vlogs, but I don't think they should be a part of the drama that Austin tends to involve himself in. I don't think it happens on a rather excessive basis, but I think it's something worth noting, especially when looking at these dramas. This isn't exclusive, but it's a cumulative criticism they shouldn't ignore. Hell, one of their newest videos was originally titled as the children ranking seductive Halloween costumes. And you can see why it bothers people. Infants aren't props and their innocence and what? well-being should be prioritized. It was you? Wait, what do you mean it was me? Want to be on camera, even if they appear to enjoy it. Austin and Cam What do you mean it was me? Where am I? It was the picture? Oh, this? Oh, 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 this? Yeah. Yes, that's me. Catherine constantly talk about how their life has changed due to the attention in the series, but hardly take a look at how it's going to affect a child at one of their most vulnerable times in their life. And when you're someone like Austin who clearly finds some value in the drama, you know, not being criticized for it could have genuine ramifications on your children. It's not like I'm against having children in family vlogs, but I don't think they should be a part of the drama that Austin tends to involve himself in. I don't think it happens on a rather excessive basis, but I think it's something worth noting, especially when looking at these dramas. This isn't exclusive, but it's a cumulative criticism they shouldn't ignore. Hell, one of their newest videos was originally titled as the children ranking seductive Halloween costume. That's insane, dude. Austin and L rape my seductive Halloween costumes. What the fuck? And you can see why it bothers people. Infants aren't props and their innocence and well-being should be prioritized over the acquisition of views. The fact that they never really talk about these things just makes them poor role models, really. And I'll explain why now. Okay, but they have a sick house and a fucking matted out uh, Range Rover. So I'm inclined to agree with them. Take this recent issue where Austin acquired a jet ski and decided to ride it around his mansion's pool. According to many in the area, the amount of water discharged caused mudslides that created additional problems in the neighborhood, including negatively affecting property and a grape plantation. A complaint had been made to the city, but the antics continued. Now, as far as I can see, there's not really much to imply this isn't the Ace family. It adds up. So eventually this was resolved in private and Catherine did actually talk about it in their video and removed the jet ski from the accommodation in which she made this statement. And Austin wanted to get into this jet ski and there is nothing- Okay, I believe it now. Whatever they're saying, I agree with the, her and the family and everyone else is just a bunch of fucking haters. And then I could do about it because, you know, Austin is Austin. At the end of the day, you know, Sometimes I kind of have to be a team player and accept some of the things that he's gonna do. To be honest with you guys, Austin has been doing crazy things for the past couple of years. You guys know that. Um, you guys should see the things that didn't make it onto our channel because of me. So I'm like content patrol. After the first time that he used it, um, we actually got a complaint. We were actually unaware of. The complaint went straight to our builder because the neighbor's actually friends with the builder. And so he's like, hey man, like there's water coming down on my property. Like originally when Austin rode the jet ski, I was under the impression, even Austin was under the impression. What's the address, boys? Someone said house is foreclosed and is on Zillow. Gotta check it out. How the fuck did this house get foreclosed, dude? I need to see it. I need to see it, dude. Oh, so I have two yeah, stories left. So, dude, the Ace family's in It's such filmed for 3D glasses, yeah. <sighs> okay, earlier we were talking about how Hoshi or whatever chat was arguing with, but I couldn't see it because I was feeding babies, but chat was right. She's a Okay, stop. What is this? Is this it? Dude, that house is massive, dude. What the fuck? Though he defeated TikTok, though he defeated TikTok superstar Bryce Paul in a highly publicized boxing match, KRM, multiple reports, confirmed property records.
a man another small fortune to complete construction on both structures combine two separate mansions the one super size why but like why why do you need oh my god dude 10 bathrooms for 10 bedrooms 15 bathrooms racked up 21 million views in the video shows off the house's lux 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 amenities the blindingly all white mansion including marble chef's kitchen Oh my God, they did the fucking thing again for, for a Chris Brown headline basketball game from the proceeds. McCroom pledged to donate 50,000 to the charity of his choice. So it remains unclear what organizations receive funds. Oh my God, these guys keep doing it. It's a different house. This one is super ugly. Oh, you found it? Oh shit, I fucked up. Wait, that's not right. That's not their house, dude. That's their old house. And their old house was sold for $3.1 million. It's in Woodland Hills. Where the fuck is Woodland Hills? Oh, it's like near Calabasas. That's the one where you, uh, that's the one that got- Like, no one thought that the water would, like, reach anywhere else. Even though, yes, water reaches in other places. But because we have an infinity pool, we thought that the water was going down on, like, the bottom or, like, the drainage part. So since we have, like, all this land that goes all the way down, we thought, oh, it's just water. Like, you know, it's not gonna go anywhere. There's not that much water. So he hit our, our builder up, and he was like, hey, like, there's some water going here. So our builder actually took it upon himself and built a whole entire retaining wall down below on our property so he built that wall and he actually didn't even tell us because it was my birthday we were on vacation so he said he didn't want to bother us with it so yeah when we came back chat be sure to put your 3d glasses in the box uh near the exit when you're on your way out of the theater of course i hope you're you know that you're supposed to be wearing your 3d glasses right now for this portion of the video back and use the jet ski the third time uh we got a complaint and even though there was a retaining wall there, someone wanted to complain and say something anyways, which I understand, like, it's still the matter of the fact, but it's still my property that the water is going down on. But to be honest with you, if that were me, I would be so upset. Like, if someone was putting anything on my property, like, it doesn't even matter if it's water. And so you don't want anything on your property. If I had a garden or, you know, uh, like a garden of grapes <laughs> or like trees and stuff, like, I wouldn't want anything on my property. So I completely understand like if anyone were to be upset, but again, you know, there is that retaining wall that's there. But either way, I want the jet ski out. It kind of sucks that she didn't. Oh my God. Bro, can you imagine? You have like a fucking, you have like a $3 million mansion. And then right on top, you have this ugly ass $10 million mansion. Okay. And they're like constantly doing construction. It's a fucking eyesore in the neighborhood. And then this dude is just like dumping mudslides into your property, dude. Like a fucking waterfall of mud. Stop! <laughs> We found where Yair Bolsonaro's caca went. <laughs> Call back, dude. The six hours ago. Nice. La caca. Yeah. Andy Ken is the ultimate family vlogger. Actually apologize.
We'll look at that after. You can bear him. Sorry really does seem to be the hardest word for this family, but it could be worse. She does at least empathize with the people making the complaints. Then there's this recorded confrontation with Austin, which honestly feels kind of forced but you know at least they took action though i guess it would have been nice to see more of a personal acknowledgement from austin given that it was his antics on the jet ski that caused this trouble hey where is it it's gone it's sold my jet ski is not gone it is stop saying that austin how the hell did you get out the pool that jet ski is so heavy how do you think it got in the pool me and like four of my friends You did not have people carry out of the pool. I did. To where? Where is it? Commenters stated how they felt Austin came across as rather rude and inconsiderate. As said, I hope it's fake, but it also seems daft that once again... Austin kind of ruined the cameras off. The camera's not off. You're literally commenting under the fucking video, which that camera recorded. People from your chat are whispering me? That's weird. He purposely miss out on the opportunity to be a bit more mature and take some responsibility. Maybe I'd be a bit annoyed too if I thought my partner had sold one of my items, but equally he was behaving so recklessly on it and there was no use for it either. It's hard to really blame anyone but yourself. For he means when he thinks the camera's off, but it's not even off. Like the record, Catherine didn't actually sell it. She just put it in the garage. Although this issue is resolved, you don't really receive the impression that Austin has grown from the situation. And I think the idea of personal growth is important to the issue at hand, especially with a young or sensitive audience. Now, fortunately, Catherine's framing kind of shows Austin in this situation. The Why would they fill the pool to the fucking top? <laughs> it's literally an infinity pool, you fucking broke bitch. That's why it's filled to the top, broke boy. <laughs> Uh, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, dude. Poor shaming, you've changed. I mean, dude, yeah, I have three of them. No, motherfucker, I just, we watch like architectural digest videos all day in here. You, you know what an infinity pool looks like juvenile individual that he is but he's often the one at the helm and he's the one with control over the narrative there's literally an infinity pool in the casino in grand theft auto roleplay okay like <laughs> which as we've shown isn't always the best decision austin comes across as a bit immature and the jet ski situation shows him as a big kid who loves his toys a little too much he often seems to lack thought about how his actions affect others and that's not a good thing for a creator his size i think it'd be good for him to sometimes take a step back and look at the implications beyond his immediate family with an impressionable audience you're missing out on that opportunity The public eye is a cruel mistress. It's true, it kind of sucks we focus on the negative rather than the positive. But by focusing on themselves as victims of the haters, they are doing exactly the same. The Ace family still have millions of loyal subscribers who like and watch every single video they put out. Even at the peak of all the drama, they have completely persisted as creators in the spotlight with overwhelmingly positive like to dislike ratios, which I know doesn't mean everything, but they say enough about the strength of the ace family members does that mean that as public figures they don't have problems no not at all in fact the public eye can give you a lot of problems but it doesn't mean those problems are sourced in criticisms that have yielded from public behavior which to many people is fair enough to criticize i think the ace family understand that to be honest because they do acknowledge it but they try to link it back to public criticism in an attempt to deflect it Deep down, the real problems with the public eye are, as always, how it can affect the personal private lives of individuals, which has always been a problem for anyone with celebrity status, especially rumors of what's personally going I love that there's like a mini conflict occurring in the chat about one person saying that, oh, this is just clearly Gemini behavior, and then other Geminis in the chat saying, come on, chat, stop hating on Geminis. I love little, little conversations, uh, in the chat that occur like that, you know what I mean?
going on behind the scenes and how the gossip can spread. This is something the Ace family has been subjected to as well. And once again, that's the problem with family vlogs. I genuinely believe that vlogging your life in the way that the Ace family does put your family at risk. We spoke about Austin's relationship with Kath. I'm not going to lie. Maybe I'm so fucking used to just like people being straight Nazis and shit that like a lot of these like little mini scams don't, they don't hit the same. It's like, usually I'm maybe because we've been watching a lot of murder stuff. You know what I mean? Where it's like, where is the, if there's no like grooming, if there's no, you know, sexual assault or fucking, I don't know, like. Like, I'm just, my, my, I've gotten desensitized to, like, YouTubers scamming for shit, which is, like, literally everyone does it, right? Where if I don't see, like, a crypto scam or, or, like, actual harm, like, physical harm or abuse to another person, like, it just doesn't phase me that much. Which, by the way, I might be wrong. Like, I'm sure that that's gonna, you know, it might... The dick lollipop was really fucking bad, but... But for the family, it's a huge selling point. On Twitter, they only follow each other and they publicly indulge in a lot of romantic behavior and market it to their audience. However, in spite of this, many have become suspicious that it's a bit of an act, many relating to other reported behaviors from family members, mostly Austin. One of the prominent personal narratives is the one regarding Austin McBroon's faithfulness to his wife, Catherine. There are a lot of individuals who have claimed that Austin's antics extend to other women, thus yielding to a narrative regarding infidelity that a lot of people believe. There have been a few videos and posts that have accused him of this. One that received a significant amount of coverage was a post by Bellic Grr, who in posting an Instagram message she sent to Catherine on Twitter, stated that while Austin was in Miami for the weekend, he slept with one of her friends and then made her sign an NDA. The author of this message said they couldn't stand quietly and let this happen, and wanted to let her know as a mother and and a woman. She also posted an additional reply saying that she had all the proof and screenshots and would only talk to Catherine. Catherine did see this and she snapped back, saying that if there was evidence she wanted to see it and if they were at risk of being sued due to an NDA, then she would pay for it out of her own pocket. There were no further public interactions in this exchange. And honestly, it's hard to really prove anything either way. There are a lot of claims about Austin's infidelity. Some had suggested that the person sending this message couldn't have been watching since Elle was still in the belly as their first video was the Q&A after Elle was born. However, as we know, looking at the social blade, it seemed there may have been videos before the first upload. So unfortunately, that was a bit of a dead end. There were some additional conversations and possible proof, but honestly, it was not concrete at all. It was pretty flimsy and therefore the situation just tailed off. Don't get me wrong. There are a significant amount of people who believe they've seen Austin Yo, please stop spamming your fucking sign, dude. Literally, no one cares, okay? No one cares what your fucking sign is. Oh, my God. And the people who are screaming Chad Vice now suck my dick, okay? There's a lot of planning that goes into shit like that. We might not be able to do it today. There's new videos of him. Uh, there's new proof videos of him at clubs. Oh, that dude definitely goes to fucking clubs and shit. What do you mean? Wait, that was in dispute? Did I miss that while I was peeing? Dude, I've been peeing a lot, but it's because I've been drinking a lot of water. <sighs> Hot take, cheating on your spouse is normal and should be encouraged to make sure you want them. What? Cheating. You can't ignore that. But this is the sort of thing that would undeniably put stress on individuals within families. And a lot of it comes from the simultaneous popularity and unpopularity of Austin. There are various videos out there that, quote, prove that he's cheating. And once again, it's really hard to ascertain what the truth is. All right, so it's really hard to make out. But um, this is Austin right here. So we'll just try to, like, slow it down somehow. Um... <coughs> So I think it's this girl right here. If you look really carefully. All righty. Honestly, it's hard to ignore. Okay, uh, here's the fucking real hot take. I'm just gonna tell you exactly what it is. They are almost 
certainly in a fucking open relationship. And they can't admit it because they're supposed to be like a fucking uh, Christian. Like they're supposed to be a Christian wholesome family. You know, that's it. Ignore the general case of cheating given the amount of claims, but the number of people reaching to try and get a slice of the pie is just nauseating to follow. This eventually boiled over with probably the strongest allegations of them all, alluding to sexual assault. Published by YouTube by the name of Cole Carrigan, he uploaded a video called The Truth About the Ace Family, which is a 15 minute video detailing and promoting these allegations against him. So I know a lot of you guys are probably thinking, what does Cole Kerrigan have to do with the Ace family? Why is he inserting himself in something that has nothing to do with him? He should just become a drama channel at this point. Whenever it involves people that I love, I don't care who you are. I will speak what I want to speak. And if I have facts to speak, it will be said. In the video, he states how he came to the conclusion that he needs to come forward regarding this. He states that people have been threatened with lawsuits and that he's not afraid to talk about it because he hasn't signed an NDA. He talked about how Keemstar had reached out to him and called him before subsequently turning down the story because he took a 500k bribe from the Ace family. So we kind of just stayed low because we, we saw a bunch of tweets about people already knowing that he was uploading. Okay, that's a lie. There's no shot. The Ace family doesn't have 500k to fucking drop on a bribe, dude. Those motherfuckers can't even... <laughs> what do you mean? They can't even pay like... They can't even pay like $100,000 uh, to a charity event. They used to. So where did their money go? A video the next day about the situation. So we kind of were just like not worried. And we were just going to kind of let it unfold that way. So we didn't have to insert ourselves where... It wasn't needed. The next day came and he didn't tweet anything. He didn't upload anything. So I texted him saying, how much did they pay you to keep quiet? And he responded with this and I was completely shocked. I immediately called my friend and told her that he was paid off $500,000 to keep quiet about the situation. No, I don't believe that. No, I don't, I don't believe that, dude. No shot. There's no shot they're dropping 500 bills, dude. What? and that I needed to come forward. He then spoke about the situation. He notes that there are NDAs involved, but that would be nullified in instances of rape and that this situation is now more important than that. So obviously my tweet got a lot of attention and someone from Austin McBroom's team actually texted my friend that this happened to. I'll put the screenshot right here. Basically saying that we should be careful and shouldn't go any farther than what we're already doing to avoid legal action. Demon Seaman, thank you for the thank you for the 10 gifted subs. Dude, that's I don't believe this. I'm sorry. I mean this and I proceeded to tell her they're just trying to scare you. I just went through this exact same thing, so I'm not scared. I also didn't sign an NDA, and I also don't tolerate the shit that has happened to my friend. So with that being said, I told her to ignore that message because what needs to be said is going to be said regardless, and if I need to say it, I'll do it, because I didn't sign an NDA, come arrest me. So the story is that basically Austin approved a set of girls to come down and see him. They convened in Miami around the 21st of July for an event. Austin went with his dad. Cole then provides corroborating screenshots to show circumstantial evidence for the environment that preceded this event, and then he goes into the details of the sexual assault. Disclaimer, this following clip will not be pleasant. After they all had been drinking, my two friends went back to their room to go change because the sun was setting and that's when Austin the security guard the father and two other guys came into their room obviously I don't have recordings I've went down in the room but my friend told me that she repeatedly said no multiple times over and over and over to the point where she started crying begging them to stop that's when they forced themselves in her and i will insert the photos of the blood all over the bed sheets in the hotel room right here on the exact same date june 22nd there are many more details but i'd recommend watching the video if you're interested it's strong stuff for sure
He continues to show evidence of a conversation that followed that he felt provided more substantiation to the environment that played into this before having this friend who is the victim come on the phone for an anonymous testimony. Bro, this literally the went from, <laughs> this literally went from like, he's being a clown in a jet ski in a pool to like, he had like, he did a gang rape. What the fuck? That's crazy. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's what I I meant when I said it's like crazy, but um, it seems a little like the, the, the details of the story from this other person seems a little murky. I don't know if that's like, I don't know. I don't know where it is. The 500,000 K possibilities now. No, it's not. It's still not dude. No shot. The 500,000 sounds so sus. No one is dropping $500,000 dude. You crazy. You think that's true? I mean, I have no idea. I don't, I need more information. That's like a, like a brief snippet from like very little brief snippet from a source that seems not super credible. It's also fucking tied to Keemstar. And also on top of that, like, I mean, I don't know, but there's apparently, um, there's apparently proof. Someone said there was videos or something. The God family and hoop to bribery, fraud, and rape. Yeah. To silence the story on violent rape seems like 500k is okay if you got it. Dude, you're crazy. Like that. You see the photo? There were bloody sheets. Yeah, it's just sheets with uh, blood on them. Maybe 500k for hush money after a fact, but even then, damn. You really don't think rich people would drop 500k? Yes, rich people would. I don't think these people. He got baited by the 500k and got mad he wasn't paid and made a video. I remember this covered when it happened. Dude, 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 dude. This is like some super serious shit. Two L's back to back make a W. I, do you want me to look further into this? Like, do you want me to look further into this part of the story? This testimony it, doesn't provide. It seems like it seems very suspicious. This part of the story. By too much more bar the detail. If you want that, then I'd recommend you go listen. Ultimately, Cole concludes that this is enough evidence to prove beyond doubt that Austin McBroom is not just a cheat but a rapist and someone. Team baited them into it. Basically, they fell for it, faked the story, and went public off the premise that they get fucking paid. Stop trying to defend them. This is a classic case of rich people defending each other, okay? Just like the classic... Oh, fuck you. ...one who does not deserve to be in such a position of power. Okay, so now that you literally have the point of view from somebody who was actually there, that is enough proof, and I really don't need to provide anything else for you to see that... Austin, his dad, his whole security team are pieces of shit. And these are not people that should be given all this crazy amount of success. I can't live with knowing that this type of person who's doing these things to people is just like winning at life, literally having everything just handed to them, money, fame, da 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 da. This was a huge problem for the Ace family. With the public eye on them, it felt like everything was on the edge of imploding. But what was going on behind the scenes wasn't quite as cut and dry as it seemed. Listen, man, the moment you fucking insert Keemstar into a serious story like this, I'm like, I don't know if it's true or not. It's like, that's real sus. I don't, I don't know. I hate knowing. This part seems very strange. That something this serious could put an end to the ace family or such a loved group of people like i don't want to be that person and that's not what i'm here to do i don't want to split up a family i don't want to 
end relationships because I've been getting a lot of messages like that. Oh, why don't you stay quiet? Why are you trying to ruin or end this family? It's not about that. Like that's the last thing I want to do is rip someone's family apart or anything. But whenever something this serious happens and it's to my friend and multiple other people are coming forward about other experiences, it's just not something that I as a person can stay quiet on. It's just against my morals and it's something I absolutely won't do. So that's why I am here making this video for them. Wow, how honorable Cole. The video in question is heart hitting and powerful, and for a while the momentum seemed solidly in Cole's favor. However, the ties began to turn when additional details came out, particularly regarding the claims he had made about Keemstar. Obviously, as we know in his video, Cole claimed Keemstar was paid $500,000 not to cover the drama, but this was refuted pretty quickly by Keemstar himself as he posted screenshots which showed he'd followed up on his message by clarifying he was being sarcastic. 500k is a joke, he literally does not respond. If I was paid 500k, why the fuck would I tell Cole when I when he, obviously he wants to ruin the Ace family after no response from him? I texted him back saying I'm being sarcastic, no response again. Clown Kerrigan, everybody. On top of this, logically. Damn, dude, imagine getting fucking owned by Keemstar of all people, dude. Come on, dude. Come on, dude. You got duped by fucking Keemstar? You didn't do a follow-up? 500k? You're the fucking king of drama. You're gonna shut the fuck up about 500, for 500k? So the family has 500k? Come on. Speaking, there was no way that Keemstar would have admitted something like that seriously and just casually in a DM like that as it would threaten his brand. Given how much money it is likely Keemstar his brand, has- His brand. It's already, I'm not sure 500K would make a huge difference. And therefore this alternative story about sarcasm makes much more sense. Frankly, you've been very adamant on Twitter that you are going to ruin the Ace family. So if they did pay me off 500K, why would I tell you? It doesn't reflect well on Cole because it's a simple fact. If he's prepared to lie about this, then what else was he prepared to lie about? Immediately, the other girl who was referenced in the video comes forward with her own testimony. She doesn't say too much, but she says she felt the video was not released for the right reasons and that Cole had approached her. I'm the other girl that's talking about in the video. I feel like this video was made for the wrong reason. It wasn't Cole's story to tell. Cole even texted me saying we could potentially get paid 100K from this following the claim the drama alert was paid off 500K. I wanted to say that Austin McBroom did not rape me or anyone. I'm currently handling the situation my own way. I brought this to social media to address the false accusations. <sighs> you were so fucking quick, though, dude. You were so fucking quick, dude. Chat, what the fuck happened? Just wanted to get gang raped? No big deal. Wait, what are you talking about? Like, I was like, I recognize that name. I think I used to follow this girl. She has like, she used to have like blue hair and shit. No. Nah, that dude, uh, nah, dude, that has to be coerced. Austin gives off rapey vibes, not gonna lie. I mean, he could. He could also literally be a rapist. But, uh, I mean, this story seems like top-down fucking, uh, uh, sussy as hell. You know what I mean? under the precipice that he thought they could make a lot of money off this. These DMs brought forward by this other victim showed Cole not actually being concerned for the justice of victims, but showing more concern in how much money it could make them. So I'm sure they would want to pay me 100k or more, not to say shit. And then I could split that with you guys if you help me and send me all the receipts that I need. With this additional information, McBroom jumped in, showing these DMs and also stating that he would be pursuing legal action. Although Cole Cole has stated that he does not feel that they are following through on that threat. He has also admitted that his intentions were not pure at the start, but now he realizes that the fight. Well, Austin McGroom and his team will be arrested for sexual assault. My intentions were wrong in the beginning, but I realized what was more important. Wait, hold up. So why didn't that happen? 
like, the justice must persist and has found a new. I mean, you know, I know the police force is no, like notoriously bad at dealing with rape cases, but like. I don't, I, I actually don't understand. Reason, I just hate this all. There were some additional tweets and allegations that were just terrible. This set of screenshots were proven completely fake. Really Pretty depressing. Catherine responded to, but it was with this weird DM. I don't know what was worse. Last night should, shouldn't have happened. I think I might be pregnant with your baby. Please respond. I can't say you're doing anything right now. I'm scared of what will happen. Text me what the hell you're talking about. Nothing happened. And which I wasn't even sure was in the video. And I'm not sure how it tied into the allegations. So I was confused about that. Oh, and one more thing. This garbage tweet, which implied what? that because he had made multiple statements about involving his lawyers, it applied some kind of... Kanye? What? What is happening, dude? If Awesome's really a victim of extortion, why post three different statements about how you're getting your lawyers involved? If you were really a victim here, there were no case kind of guilt. Play. I don't think that's how it works. I think Austin has an ego. I think he wants to make people who he feels have accused him wrongly suffer. And I think that will follow through. I think if this does go to court, you'll understand why he acquired lawyers. As a quick side note, I thought it was really terrible. Also, how people claimed that one of the girls was paid off because she said Austin McBroom was not at fault. You know, the sort of believe victims parentheses when they agree with me narrative that i find absolutely vulgar most of the people involved in this situation are fundamentally unlikable and i don't think many of the audiences are equipped to handle this either trial by tarot cards is a new one i admit i'd also like to add that the girl has since deleted these statements from her instagram but stands by them understandably she didn't want it to be a persistent aspect of her life so are you just gonna delete the photo of you exposing colin casually posted pictures of clout chasing I still have scheduled posts my brand deals dummy. I was advised by my manager to take it down. I'd rather handle this away from social media. Victims, how are you a victim if she says she wasn't raped? Like, you've been raped before you got get attested at a hospital. You don't just take a shower right away like Cole said in the video. Like, what the fuck is this crazy shit? Okay, that's crazy. Hold up. Wait, so something did happen to her? I don't understand. It hasn't been handled with care, and now the victims are being put on blast? I'm so confused. So did actually something happen? Like, what the fuck? Dude, I, I'm so. Stop saying with the bloody sheets and the muddy shoes, dude. Stop. Life. It's hard to say exactly what happened, but I'm not going to dismiss experiences as people being paid off. It has become a bit of an obsessive narrative, even on Keemstar's video where he shows the context to the DM. There are people claiming he was paid off too. One person even said, watch Cole Carrigan's video as proof despite that video. It's a mess and people are projecting preconceived opinions to dictate their position on something much more complicated. It's not impossible that someone's been paid off somewhere, but on the other hand, being able to expose someone as paying you off could be just as profitable in the online age so people would be very cautious in offering individuals payments themselves in spite of all this i just feel bad for the daughters involved the what about the children cliche i'm aware but these are the controversies that are gonna make people's lives a misery because people are taking a family life and turning it into a game of clout and those children didn't consent to that this new drama Bro, people will be like active shooter in Washington and then fucking post the link. It's like, yeah, dude, send it over. Just let me just fucking end the stream, dude. Fuck it. Let me just get banned right now. That is the point where it becomes destructive. I saw him talk about what's going on in Washington. Dude, I don't know what's going on in Washington and neither do you. Like, what is the fucking problem with people where it's like, I, I'm literally in Washington right now. A shot was fired right above my head. Why aren't you covering it? Like, did, did something happen in the world and, like, you just immediately rush over here to be like, why the fuck aren't you covering the story? Like, insanity, dude. In fucking sanity. Happens multiple times a day where it's like, dude, a cop fucking shot at a protester. Why aren't you covering it? We look it up, literally, like, a story that came out an hour ago. Little did I know there was going to be a story that came out 10 minutes ago that also deserves coverage. I don't know fully whose fault that is, but the fact that Cole can sit there and say he doesn't want to tear a family apart, but then make that video extremely disingenuous. Austin has clearly been up to something too. The extent of it, I'm not sure, but he needs to be more cautious. He's a huge creator now. 
Congratulations, you live a lavish life, but you still have a family. This is the sort of stuff that will harm a relationship even if your partner believes you. And the worrying thought is that doubt that people are just staying together for the sake of the YouTube channel. That's not healthy either. Families are meant to be natural. They're meant to exist because you want them to exist. If you can film that family life and make a quick buck, then I'm not one to stand in your way. But the prime aim of a family is to surround yourself with people you love and provide a healthy environment to children who are going to be the next generation. And you want to provide them with the principles that they stand by. Austin and Catherine obviously didn't ask these allegations, but people's negative judgment towards the Ace family has been a result of a consistent failure to empathize with other people. And so when the Ace family needed empathy of their own, they didn't get it. My empathy is free. I think it's shit that if false, these allegations have surfaced in such a way, pushed by an agenda hungry, toxic individual who should be nowhere near dealing with cases as sensitive as this. But look at the controversies we've spoken about today and ask yourself how can you make audiences see your perspective more clearly the ace family kind of suck they seem fake they often seem entitled to think they're above criticism because of the good deeds they've done which trivializes those good deeds they lack empathy for others and yet try to manipulate it out of their audiences through instance or truth style documentaries and generally they mostly austin seem to be ill-equipped to be role models to viewers both adults and children this has built up a lot of contempt in critics because they've acquired this position of power while not being particularly responsible. And so when these more serious allegations surface, paired with the assumption that many people have that Austin is a cheat, people immediately wanted to see the back of them. People wanted to take them down. I personally treat these allegations with caution, given that it already- Okay, there's nothing else here, I think. What is- what else is left here? I guess the only thing left here is the top of the hour ad break, which you guys are fucking spamming about regardless, so you're ready for it. Um, but of course, if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe. You can subscribe for $5 or for free with the Twitch Prime to avoid those ad breaks. You know what I'm saying? Dude, I am so hot right now. What the fuck? Like, Dude, dude. Even if I was going to cover this story, I will literally not cover it now because Violet Vabond has been unironically blasting this for like weeks now. Look at this. Girl who was charged with murder for burying her stillborn child. 7.15. Hasn't stopped spamming it. Like, has not stopped spamming it since then. God damn, dude. Chill. Maybe we'll get to it. It's only 71. It's only 71 degrees. I don't know what's going on. Oh, here's the ad break. I forgot to run it. There's an H3 update video. Okay, I'll, I'll skip the rest of this and then we'll just watch the 